All right, guys, welcome back to day 26. Uh, in this video, we are going to be learning how to enable this delete button so we can add stuff inside a playlist and then delete stuff from our playlist uh, when we press on this delete button. So let's get started with this video. This is going to be hopefully a really short video. And by th and the end of this video, I have something really cool for you. And uh, yeah, I'll save it probably for later, just a little bit of a teaser. But uh, yeah, let's just quickly finish this video and I'm going to show you what we are going to be doing in the remaining three days uh, or remaining three, four days of our uh, Melody Music Player project. So anyways, let's get started with the delete button. So let's go to the first, uh, the first thing that we are going to do is obviously go to the delete button. So here is our delete button. So let's add a command over here, the function that we want to call when this delete button is pressed. So let's uh, just call it uh, delete, delete song. And then we'll just create a function above uh, above the delete button and let's uh, song song and then we are going to do the same thing that we did uh, so for example if we add a song over here let's add um, journey.wave now what we are doing when we delete this button is we first have to take out the index of the song so let's add another song so that you guys can understand properly all right so when we select a song and then we when we press on this delete button we want to make sure that we know which one of the songs that we want to delete this is the same thing that we did in the play underscore music function using the curse selection function if you remember so let's go down to play underscore music function which must be somewhere around over here so if you remember we found out the selection the selected song using this function called curse selection and this gave us a tuple and then we selected a song by converting this into an integer uh, by selecting the first element of this uh, tuple and then converting it into an integer and then we basically use this integer that is the index to take out that song from our playlist array so we are going to do, be doing the same thing in our delete uh, delete song function so let's go to delete song function and over here we're just gonna paste this selected song and what we are going to do is we are not going to use this one instead of this what we are going to do is we are going to write um, we are first going to use the playlist box because we want to remove item from a playlist box first of all and then we can remove items from a playlist array so we will just write playlist dot box and then we are going to write uh, dot we can use the uh, dot delete or uh, yeah let's go with dot delete and then over here we can just write selected song and uh, that should be pretty much it obviously you also need to delete the item from the playlist but for now let's just go with this one and see if it works or not so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reload this let's reload it go to add go to journey.wave select it press on delete and as you can see our item is being deleted so let's add more than one item so that we can be perfectly sure that it's getting deleted so let's select piano dot let's select journey dot wave because this is on the second index so let's delete this one all right so our playlist delete function delete song function is working properly but when we are deleting items from our playlist playlist box uh, we are not actually deleting from our uh, playlist array which we declared uh, to have songs so if we go down somewhere around uh, uh, over here as you can see we are taking out the items from our playlist so we have a playlist list or a playlist array which contains all the songs with their full names and paths. So we want to delete these songs from our playlist so they don't start getting uh, added up. So let's just show you why I want to delete the playlist. So if you are going to print, uh, let's just print out the playlist over here and I'm going to reload it. Let's click on add, journey.wave, select the song and if you press on delete, uh, as you can see even though the item from here is deleted it's still showing up in the in the playlist array and if we add more than one song let's add journey.wave again let's add let's add piano and let's delete piano.mp3 and you can see over here still there are three items we have deleted two of these items from a playlist playlist box but there are still items remaining inside our playlist that is a playlist array now uh, the thing is that even if you don't delete items from the playlist array it's i'm just calling it array obviously in python they are called lists but just because our uh, list is actually called the playlist so it's getting a little bit confusing that's why i'm calling it a playlist array so it doesn't really matter whether you delete items from the playlist or not because it will keep get getting added up and added up 
and uh, because we'll be deleting items from a playlist box based on the index and we are playing the songs based on the index so it's not going to really matter but it's not really a good practice to just let the songs remain in our playlist for imagine like if we are playing music for like the whole day in our music player then it's going to be a problem otherwise if you are playing music for like maybe one hour or two hours it's not going to be really a problem but still because we are good coders that's why we are going to be deleting the items from our playlist array two so for that it's really really easy so we are just gonna write playlist and then we are going to use this pop function the benefit of this pop function and not this delete function is because the delete function inside inside the list also we can probably use not delete but there is this remove function inside the playlist which it requires the name of the item so if our items name is for example uh, journey.wave it requires the name of the item inside this remove function but if we use the dot pop function what we can do is we can just give it the index of the item that we want to be deleted so we can just use this selected song and we can paste it over here and this will remove the item from our playlist so let's actually print out the playlist again and see whether it's working or not so let's go to reload click on add let's go to journey.wave Let's add one more item. It's going to be another MP3. Now let's remove this first one from here. So let's uh, delete this and see. So as you can see in journey.wave right now, it's uh, because we deleted it. The piano.mp3, the piano.mp3 has been removed. Now if we remove this journey.wave, so if we select this, we press on this delete button. As you can see, our list became empty. So now we know that our playlist is removing actually songs. And even if you just, you know what I want you to do? I want you to just comment this out for a second and just try it, uh, try out without removing the songs from the playlist. You will see that this music player still works. It, it still works properly, it's still playing the music in the right way. But it's just a good practice to remove items from a playlist so that the size of this array doesn't become too big and, uh, you know, just resources are not wasted. So anyways, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. We have uh, completed a delete underscore song function. I know this was a very easy video, but I want to show you the teaser that uh, I decided to tell you in the in the starting. I, I told you that we are going to be doing something really cool in the upcoming videos. So right now you can see this is our GUI. So if this doesn't look really cool, it, it has it doesn't have really cool buttons and stuff. It is it is not that beautiful. So I've created this file which I'll be I'm going to be going through in the future but for now I'm just going to execute it for you guys just to show you what we will be doing in the future so in the coming videos we are going to be making our GUI look this much beautiful and not only this beautiful we are going to be learning about different styles and themes so that you can put your own personality into your music player you can like just like in the previous one you can add songs and stuff it's not that uh, different but you have different kind of things in this uh, music player you can increase and decrease the volume but look at how our music player has changed uh, since this video and since like in the coming future videos. So this is done by something known as themes and styles inside Kinter, uh, which we'll be, we will be talking about in the future videos. Not maybe in the next video, I'm not sure whether in the next videos or in the upcoming videos. But yeah, we'll be definitely learning about how to implement this, this kind of cool look in the upcoming video. So anyways, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll show, uh, not I'll show you. I'll see you on day 27. Peace out.